Hi, uh, thanks for uh, having me this whole uh, hardware and uh, activity. Uh, yeah. So, uh, maybe before we get started, I wanted to highlight a couple of uh, resources that I and folks I know are working on for uh, folks that are getting into hardware. Uh, the first of which is uh, something that I do out in the Bay Area called uh, Bay Area Guided Tours. Uh, when people want to go and uh, have to design something, want to understand the manufacturing process that's going to yield in its uh, mass production, uh, oftentimes it's much better equipped to be able to go and make design decisions that can support that and build relationships with those factories. So if anybody out here is interested in starting something similar, please come track me down. The second thing I'm working on is uh, what I call hardware office hours. Basically, uh, when you're starting a hardware startup, there's a lot of complexity to work manufacturing, distribution, so on. And it's helpful if you have uh, somebody who's been uh, been through it before and can give some guidance. So if uh, you're interested in getting connected up with uh, somebody who's sort of an expert in the industry in the domain, or a situation where you have some uh, perspective to share, that's uh, something I'd like to let uh, you know about. The final thing is uh, for those of you that have soft software, uh, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Stack Exchange. It's so something where you can go and post questions, and uh, there'll be a, a big, diverse, uh, rich amount of answers. Hardware, um, there's lots of obscure questions that are coming up. And uh, a friend of mine is uh, trying to build a community of folks to be able to have this sort of received knowledge that you can go and spin up and move through your hardware project more quickly. All right, uh, so now on to what I'm working on. So um, I think the first thing that I'll observe is just, uh, just the fact that I need to see with the whole software and mechanical design how uh, going from this uh, sort of big room size situation uh, to something that's really fast, really easy, and uh, really affordable, um, just absolutely transforms engineering goes up with the design of those domains. So the, uh, the software side, going from the big uh, room side mainframes to desktop uh, and laptop computers, and then on the, on the mechanical design side, from large machine shops uh, to 3D printers. So uh, one observation I make about electronics and the development tools available uh, to folks we have now is that it feels a lot like uh, the mainframe computers. It feels a lot uh, like those machine shops and, and that type of interaction. Um, so it's characterized by three, three, three things. It's glacial, uh, it's cumbersome, and it's expensive. So for folks that have come from a software background and are used to a situation where you're able to go and uh, write code, uh, press compile, show it to customers or debug it, um, getting started with electronics can be kind of a shock. So uh, this is uh, one woman, Sally Carson, and she's a co-founder of an Internet of Things company in Nokia. And when Nate was asking her about what was the biggest obstacle for her development process, uh, it was the turn time. She was used to hours and days as a cycle time, as in at least months of electronics. The second thing uh, that can be kind of rough uh, when doing electronics is just the, it could be a big sink on your time uh, working on the logistics of getting a board made. So uh, after you have your design file, um, you have to go and export, or after you have your design, you have to export a huge range of files. Uh, some of them get sent out to the bath house, uh, get sent along to a contract with manufacturer. You have to go and build the bill of materials, uh, go and find distributors and go and send those parts. You have to make sure that the board and the components go to uh, the assembler and then finally make the F board make its way back to you. It's just if you're a design engineer and you want to focus on designing, it can be it can be a distraction working on all the logistics of getting a board uh, in your hands. I think a third thing uh, that uh, characterizes electronics development is uh, it just expects. So uh, I, for a friend of mine recently did uh, make a three by four inch uh, motor controller board, and uh, we were shopping around for different uh, vendors to go and make uh, different volumes of them. These, these were the effective kind of quotes that we got, and it's kind of rough when uh, if you want to sort of see and sort of check your work, it's going to cost you about fourteen hundred dollars. So to sort of sum up um, my sense of what electronics development is now, it's uh, push the software analogy. It's like every time you press compile, you have to wait a week. Pay fourteen hundred dollars and spend a lot of your time uh, sort of organizing the computer kind uh, of happen. So our objective is to go and change that and make uh, the experience of electronics development uh, closer match uh, laptops and, and the desktop three D printers uh, and the software and the mechanical design domains. So I think our inspiration for the interaction is desktop printing, uh, being in a situation where you you for, for the hardware side of things you put in toner, you put in white paper. Um, and the printer's often ready to go. 
Um, the analogy that works at about the component side is you put in a blank board like the paper, you put in the components like the toner, and the robot is ready to go make your board. On the software side of things, the interaction shouldn't be much more difficult than putting a document with the software. Um, so basically, you just you file print. Um, in this case, from a clear design software, the eagle, or you know, whatever, the interaction shouldn't be any more difficult than just filing. So in order to be able to pull, uh, pull off something where you're able to just file name from your design software and come out with a functioning board, the robot needs to be able to handle a range of uh, electronics, uh, a range of steps with the electronics manufacturing process. So the first is being able to make an ECD uh, with the traces and kind of kind of components. Second, uh, you need to be able to put down solid case. Uh, this can be an electromechanical interface between those, those pads on the board and the components. Then, uh, use the vacuum to put components on the board, put it in the oven to make sure the board can handle right. So we, uh, our robot needs to integrate all of these. Feedback from folks to make sure that we're, our, our hypotheses really happen what people want. 
So uh, to do that, uh, you go to put down the deposit for, and then uh, it would be able to go and sort of check in monthly, uh, and we sort of say what we're working on, what we're thinking on, what the decision we're trying to make, and you'd be, uh, you'd be able to provide your perspective and help guide the design. Um, the second thing that's on the horizon is we're going to do a crowdfunding campaign uh, fairly soon. So if you want to know when that's happening, uh, you can use this URL. Because the, the last, uh, one of the things here is that we're still working on building out our team. We're looking for somebody to help uh, lead our crowdfunding campaign and also a manufacturing engineer. The, the final thing is uh, working with uh, trying to find partners at uh, electronics CAD companies. So the nice thing about uh, the Microsoft Word printing interaction is there's deep integration between the document uh, software and the printers. Uh, it would be wonderful to go and collaborate with all the young people, uh, companies like that, so we can really achieve that file make interaction instead of dragging and drop, uh, dropping the files as they make it go. So that's what I got. Thanks. Thank you. So we have time for other questions. This one over there is so Jessica uh, has a microphone. It was a very small microphone. Uh, and just, I mean, so if you could, uh, yes, uh, throughout the event, if you could please start just with your name and company. Detail about your process. So the question was what the price point of the machine was. Uh, right now we're targeting uh, 5,000 for the different place, and then 1,000 for each other step of the process. So it'd be 1,000 to add solder application, 1,000 to add routing, and so on. So, like, any other questions? Go ahead. Is this a prototype or do you have uh, a few of the pieces that are already? Like, what, what stage are you doing? Sure. Um, so the question is, are we a prototype or are we in production? So right now we're at the prototype stage. And uh, I, our roadmap is uh, in the next uh, month or so, we'll have the machine ready. And uh, if people send us designs, we'll send them back functional boards. Um, and then uh, once we really refine design uh, through that and try to get it out, that's a new hacker space to make the space a tech shop. Uh, to really have people put a lot of experience through it. Once you're really happy with it at that point, um, then we do the crowdfunding campaign. All right, thanks so much.